and when he threw a rock at it, it grabbed two trees and it starts shaking these trees. And one of the trees, it completely knocked the tree over. Right by this stump over here, the little one was looking out and he was an itty bitty little guy, uh, black, shiny, leathery looking face with amber colored eyes. In 2022, a group of us went camping in the Cascade Range of Washington State. Scott Taylor was present, and for those of you that are unaware of Scott's work, he is responsible for investigating more Sasquatch reports in Washington State than anyone else. While sitting at the campfire, I asked Scott, out of the 210 reports you've already conducted, what is your favorite? Without hesitation, he said, the night watchman. This is one of our favorite Sasquatch stories, and we've asked Scott to meet us on location to tell us the story. This is the report of the Night Watchman. Hi, my name is Scott Taylor. I'm a BFRO field investigator. I had my first encounter in 2007, October, or excuse me, 2005 in October. Uh, the next year I went on a BFRO expedition and after that became a BFRO ex uh, investigator. This is one of my early reports. This report was done in I believe about 2008, but the events that happened here was 2003, starting in July, uh, late July, and going through August and into September. This is the story of the night watchman. And what happened was a couple had been hired to stay up here while they're logging and watch the equipment, make sure nobody broke into it or messed around with it. So the first that they were here, their trailer was parked right here in this place, right along the road. And the logging was up above us here. Now the character of the forest has changed quite a bit. Back at that time, and for a few years after that, this was just a fresh clear cut. Now the alder trees are 30, 40 feet tall. I worked for 30 years, 35 years as an engineer at Boeing. And uh, so things like this, uh, I take a, a scientific look at it, but also you have to have a certain amount of intuitive understanding of what people are telling you too. So um, that works out really well for figuring out you know how things really transpire during events like what th this couple had to to uh, endure through the summer and it actually at first it was scary for them they got used to it and then it became kind of routine uh, their big mistake was mentioning it to the uh, logging crew foreman and uh, with doing that the next day they were removed from the area so the, the loggers did not want that story to get out so this is the site of the first night when this night watchman got here. The trailer had just been pulled in, they just got things set up, and they decided to come down here and fish in this pond. And so it was you know, late afternoon, and uh, they were fishing, and just right across the pond, a Sasquatch vocalized real loud. And you know, there's like, oh, what's that? And it kind of scared a few ducks. And then the Sasquatch back behind on the other side of them also vocalized as if they were communicating back and forth, which they were. And that was enough for these people. So they grabbed their fishing poles, they threw them in the car, they got in their car and they started taking off down the road and something scared some ducks up and the ducks were actually flying through the trees here and came out onto the road. One of them slammed into his right or his pass driver's side rear view mirror and it killed the duck. Um, really unusual for ducks to fly through trees. So something had to have frightened that duck a lot that it would come this way through the trees rather than that way out into the open. 
So this is the, the rough location of the second encounter. Um, we call it eyes in the clear cut. What they had done, this, this couple had walked down this, this road here and they had a laser pointer and they had, they had discovered with their cat that if they shined the light on the cat, that the light refracted off the fur and danced all around the fur and it was really, really pretty. So they thought, well, let's see what happens if we do that on deer or elk or whatever is out here. So they, they walk out here in the dark and they see three sets of eyes off to the left of this little road. And they started shining the laser pointer at them. And so the, the eyes are ducking and weaving, trying to stay out of the laser light. And finally, they got up and the eyes moved to the other side, to the right side of this little road. And one stood up full height. And then they realized that, that it wasn't a deer or something like that and uh, became again a little frightened. Uh, but they could see it, the, the light dance off the hair of the Sasquatches and they could see that there were three. There was a, a male, a female, and a, and a juvenile. And uh, so they had enough and decided to head back to their trailer. When the Sasquatches had had enough and decided they were gonna leave, they, they came down this direction and went down through the forest going down the hill. And while they were going down the hill, these, the people could hear the two Sasquatches, the male and the female, talking to each other and what what they got from that was they were complaining about these people hitting them with the laser light i mean they wouldn't know what a laser light was but they were being hit with a light and they didn't like it and they 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 could tell when the male talked because he was a deeper voice and they could tell when the female talked because it was a more feminine voice and it had a certain little sound she made at the end of each of her phrases so they over time, they could always tell who was who out in the woods just by when they heard them talk. Because the witnesses do not have audio recordings of the speech they heard, here are a few recordings from our property of both male and female Sasquatch. This will give you an idea of what they might have heard. Okay, as, as the days went by, they, uh, they got more used to the Sasquatches being around. And they had this bright idea that they would make a blind. And so they took a lot of alder poles and, and brush and they, they stood it up alongside this stump that's now fairly overgrown. But they made a blind up on top. They put poles in vertically and then they wove sticks in horizontally. And they went up in there and they hid. And they were hoping now picture that this is all open at the time because it was a fresh clear cut. And they were hoping to see the Sasquatches come to the water down below them and nothing happened. It, it was dusk, it got dark, nothing at all happened. So they got bored and they climbed down and as they're walking the road out, one of the Sasquatches was right behind them, probably by this big um, maple tree and it hooted at them and just let them know like, ha, 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 you didn't fool us. So the third night that the uh, night watchmen were here, they decided they would take uh, a late afternoon, early evening walk and walk up this road. And it was just, you know, an open spur road at the time. And they went back about a quarter mile, maybe a little further. And the guy started getting a heebie-jeebie feeling real uneasy something's not right has how he's feeling kind of kind of scared and so he said well let's go back and so they started walking back and on one side on their left side they heard this beautiful flute like whistle and they stopped and they look around they couldn't see anything and so they kept on walking and then it would start whistling again 
and there was actually one on the other side of them too. And basically they were escorted all the way out by whatever it was that was walking on either side and whistling. So one evening the, the female witness wanted to fill up their water jugs and they had rigged up a hose from the spring up the hill all the way down to a pool that was here. Now this isn't free flowing anymore, but at the time this was a free flowing open little creek. And so she was down here by these rocks on her hands and knees trying to fill up her jug. And right by this stump over here, the little one was looking out and he was an itty bitty little guy, uh, black, shiny, leathery looking face with amber colored eyes. And he was, he was down, kind of crouched down real low or maybe on his tummy, but just peeking around the, the tree. She saw him and she looked at him and she said, you stay right there. And she backed up and went to get her, her boyfriend. And when they both came back, it had taken off. But it was just watching her fill up the water jugs. This is the site of the fifth encounter. Uh, the woman had gone up the hill to check on the logging equipment, make sure it was all locked up nice and secure. And she, it was just right at dusk, about 10 p.m. summertime. It's still light enough, you can see fairly well. Uh, she came walking down the road, and she's only about this big, little, little, little red-headed gal, she's not real tall. Um, and she heard what she called a snorkeling sound. Uh, what she meant was a slurping sound, and she was curious about it, so she walked from the road over this way a little bit further. And there's a spring down here that you can't see, but at that time you, you could, you know, see where it was. And what she saw about maybe 50 yards away was a great big butt. And it was, she could tell that it was something bent over drinking from the spring. And she wasn't sure what it was. At first she thought maybe it was an elk or, or a bear or something. And then it stood up. And she said it was so fluid the way it stood up, it, it appeared to almost just grow out of the ground. Because they are so athletic and such great shape, you know, they can just stand up. They can do things humans can't do. Well, she saw it. She screams. It saw her, it screams, they both headed separate directions, both screaming. And she ran down, all the way down to where the trailer is, down at the road, and she got her boyfriend to come out and, and he had been working on the car, so he was out and he said, yeah, I heard it scream and run the other way. She thought it was screaming and chasing her, but it really wasn't. They both just parted ways, and it's almost kind of a comical, uh, scene if you think about it you know a little girl running away screaming from a sasquatch and an eight foot nine foot tall sasquatch run away running away screaming frightened of a little girl so qu quite an event that night for them many people believe that food is the most precious resource to the sasquatch i believe it's water not just any water but spring water spring water is naturally alkaline it neutralizes acid in the body and reduces inflammation. Here is a photo taken by Scott at the time of the investigation. This is where the female witness saw the big male. There's a spring in the middle of the photo. Okay, so their trailer was parked about 40 yards over here. And one night, it was August 8th, one night they, uh, they heard something walking around and it went kind of across this way and down and you know a great big animal big thing so the guy he gets up and he goes over here and, and he he's looking down there and it's dark but you know not totally dark and um, he's scared about what it is so he yelled at it and threw a rock and when he threw a rock at it it grabbed two trees and it starts shaking these trees and one of the trees, it completely knocked the tree over. So that so frightened the witness that he fired his one remaining cartridge out of his little 32 caliber pistol into the air and yelled, go away, and he ran back for his, his trailer. When the shot was fired, the male that was, was over here called out to the female, which was what broke the tree down, to basically say, are you okay? And then the Sasquatches left and they stayed in their trailer the rest of the night. 
One thing that I have learned about the Sasquatch is that they do not like to leave a trace. You might find a primitive hunting blind near a game trail, or some downed trees that seemingly block human access. Either way, these structures blend in with the forest and can be mistaken for natural occurrence. It takes a trained eye to spot because their structures are so few and well camouflaged. Here are a few photos that Scott took from the site. They may or may not have happened naturally, but either way, they are odd. I have found that a good rule of thumb is that if it's obvious, it probably wasn't made by the Sasquatch. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.